community and in the world. Um, let me ask you this. How long have you been doing ventriloquism? Really, really um, performing it for money since I was 12. I, I started learning on my own by listening to Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy on the radio show. There was no TV in my hometown, Brownsville, Texas. There was only radio. And so, I, after hearing a few shows, I asked my mother, I clearly remember this, it's so vivid. I said, is that one guy doing both voices? And she said, yes, he's a ventriloquist. And I said, what's that? She says, well, he has this kind of a doll, and he pulls a string, and the mouth opens and closes, and he does the voice. And I said, I can do that. Just like that. I don't know why or how. It just came out. It was just something I knew I could do. She said, what do you mean? And I took my kid brother, Morty, sat him on my lap, and I'd squeeze the back of his neck to cue him to open and shut his mouth, and, he, and I would do the voice for him. And she was astounded. So for my 11th birthday, uh, she got me a Charlie McCarthy replica of so that was probably 1950. And uh, the next year, my 12th birthday, uh, I got a Jerry Mahoney that had a control stick that moved, so the head moved. And still just the mouth moving, but the head moved. And I thought that was really great. Uh, by the time I was 13, uh, I, I got, my next edition was uh, a Danny O'Day because he had the Farfel thing happening on television and everything. And then I said, Mom, I really want an original ventriloquist figure because I want to be original. So on my 13th birthday, it was bar mitzvah time, and I became a man in the Jewish community. So uh, she got me, somehow or other, found a wooden carved, made in Mexico, hand carved figure that had eyebrows that went up and down. Oh, great. And I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. So there was a, a trailer park nearby, down in Brownsville, Texas, south Texas, as far south as you can go. Uh, and there was a trailer park that had a community center. On Saturday nights, they had a little dance thing, and older snowbirds would go down. And I would go out there and do my little show, and they'd pass the hat around, and I'd pick up and change about five bucks, which back in those days was a lot of money. 